I have been looking forward to this day since President Biden announced your nomination in February. And over the next several days, members of this committee will have the privilege of helping introduce you to the American people so that they can gain the sense of confidence that I have in your values, your skills, your competence, and the necessity of confirming you to the Supreme Court. Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware yesterday during the first day of hearings for Supreme Court nominee Ketanji Brown Jackson. And with day two of those hearings set to begin in just a few minutes, Senator Coons joins us now. I know, Senator, we want to get to Ukraine and you've got to get into the hearing room, so we'll dive right in. Uh, what are you hoping to hear uh, day two in the hearings? Well, yesterday, Judge Jackson uh, maintained her composure uh, as a, a whole range of senators made opening statements. Um, some of them, like mine, were laying out what I believe to be her remarkable, impeccable credentials, her record, her character, and her values. Uh, others made a wide range of attacks um, that were, I think, baseless, two-dimensional caricatures of Judge Jackson. Today, she will get to respond. Senators will be questioning her in 30-minute rounds, and she will be able to answer. And I think she will make quick work of dismissing uh, some of the more outlandish and unfounded suggestions or accusations made by a few of my colleagues. Overall, the tone and tenor yesterday was positive. Very few Republican senators questioned or criticized her actual credentials or record because they are outstanding. Well, I, I was going to say, it, 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 it struck me as a bit ironic that we got lectures from some Republicans saying they weren't going to take this into the gutter, and then Republicans <laughs> took this into the gutter saying that uh, the judge was uh, soft on crime and that she hidden somehow agenda. was a friend of sexual predators and had her own hidden agendas. I thought, I thought that was pretty sad and pathetic. Well, I'll just say this. Um, having had the chance to meet uh, her extended family, her parents, her brother, uh, I am struck by the fact that she was raised in a strong family. She, her opening statement began with uh, both thanking her family and thanking uh, God and recognizing that her faith and her work ethic have been central to what success she's had in life. She came across as a humble, disciplined, highly capable, uh, legally skilled uh, nominee for the Supreme Court. Uh, and frankly, she also got in the introduction an incredibly strong um, vote of confidence from a retired D.C. Circuit Court judge, a conservative, a Republican, who was in the position to review her rulings on the district court for many years uh, and gave the sort of unqualified uh, letter of introduction before the hearing and then personal endorsement at the hearing yesterday uh, that has been buttressed by letters of endorsement and support uh, from prominent law enforcement organizations like the International Association of Chiefs of Police and the FOP. I doubt that the FOP and IACP, that a range of conservative jurists and judges, would be supporting and endorsing anyone who was soft on crime or uh, palled around with child pornographers or was a danger to our children, as several of my colleagues suggested, without concrete foundation. Yeah, that one claim was made by one senator from Missouri, and it was interesting to note that none of his fellow Republicans even backed him up on that argument, but I suspect we'll hear more of that today. So, Senator, let me uh, forgive me for cutting to the chase, but as you watch uh, this play out, as you, as you watch this candidate present herself, do you have any question that she'll be confirmed? I don't. Uh, I think that the American people, as they watch today, uh, will see the same judge that President Biden saw when he was interviewing possible nominees. Uh, someone whose work ethic, whose experience, whose qualifications, and whose character uh, make her a great nominee for the Supreme Court. Uh, she clerked for Justice Breyer on the Supreme Court. He's been a mentor to her for years. One of the roles that he has played as a justice is to help build consensus, to work with people of different backgrounds and values. Uh, I'm going to be questioning her today about her service as the vice chair of the U.S. Sentencing Commission and some standout examples of how she worked with conservative members of that panel in the interests of advancing both law and justice. 
And that hearing begins at about 14 minutes. We'll carry it yes. live here on MSNBC. Senator, uh, let me turn the page while I have you here to Ukraine and what we're seeing right now, which is the continued attacks by the Russian military on civilians inside Mariupol, but also across the country uh, going after places like theaters where clearly marked the children are, are in there, hospitals, maternity hospitals, humanitarian corridors. Uh, Putin pushes on, frustrated perhaps, but he continues to attack Ukraine. What more, in your estimation, could and should the United States be doing here? The most important thing that President Biden can and is doing uh, is to meet with our NATO partners. Uh, yesterday, he had a conversation with the heads of state of uh, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Italy. He is traveling to Europe this week to meet with our vital NATO and EU partners. Um, our strength is our unity. And I think in order to be able to convey clearly and forcefully red lines to Putin so that his brutal butchery of civilians comes to an end, we need unity in NATO to be able to draw red lines and enforce them. We cannot bluff. Um, President Biden is being advised by the best and most skilled of our military and intelligence leaders. I trust his judgment here. He knows that we are at genuine risk, that Putin will do to Ukraine what he and his forces did to Chechnya and to Syria. Seven years into a conflict in Syria, Aleppo was in ruins. Hundreds of thousands of civilians had been massacred or displaced, uh, and Assad has evaded any accountability. If we allow Putin to continue uh, to pummel Ukraine and to escalate to using potentially chemical weapons, or even as you were discussing earlier on a panel, tactical nuclear weapons, the consequences for Ukraine, the West, and the world will be tragic. But President Biden is doing exactly what he needs to do this week, ensuring that NATO can speak with one voice to deter Putin from his dangerous escalation of this horrible conflict. Senator Coons, good morning. Jonathan Lemire, you just mentioned chemical weapons, uh, potentially even a tactical nuke. Explain to us a little more about red lines. If that's a red line that Putin crosses, what should be the consequence uh, for that action? The consequence should be what we can get strong support across NATO for doing. Bluntly, we have been successful so far because President Biden has been successful in pulling together all 30 members of NATO uh, to act swiftly and strongly and a number of other European partners who are not in NATO. So, for example, even the Swedes and the Swiss who sat out the Second World War, who did not take action against Hitler, they have joined us in sending military aid and imposing sanctions. Putin knows he cannot stand against a united NATO and West. If President Biden is able to continue to deliver the forceful unity that he has assembled amongst the West, we can deter Putin. So rather than having me guess about what is the best way to say, if he does this, we will do that, I will trust President Biden to rely on the advice of American military and intelligence leaders. He knows who Putin is, and he knows that we need to stop him. Over the last decade, as he took bites out of first Georgia, then Moldova, then Ukraine and Crimea and the Donbass, we did not do enough as a united West to stop him. This is the moment where we must. And I was encouraged by open source public reporting by the Wall Street Journal that clarified we are sending mm -hmm. advanced surface to air missiles into Ukraine to help them uh, begin to close their sky and defend Ukraine against Russia. All right, Senator Chris Coons. Thank you. As always, thank, thank you. you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it, Willie. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.